Welcome back everyone, your boy Chris Paris here, continuing the endocrine section, and now we're gonna discuss some thyroid. Thyroid disease, second most common endocrine problem worldwide after diabetes, right? Second number two, what does that mean for you? They like to ask it on exams, that's what it means. So, what if I give you, what if I give you a 35 year old woman complaining of fatigue, waking, menstrual irregularities, menstrual irregularities, weight gain, fatigue, feeling blue, I'm feeling so blue, feeling depressed, a little, a little sluggish, depressed, a little sluggish and depressed, not sleeping well, <clears throat> right? And you're a smart, bright, charming, advanced intern and you're, you send, of course, the first thing you're gonna send is a, tell me, tell me, tell me, is a, <gasps> what my, what I say? You're gonna send a beta HCG, right? And the beta HCG to make sure she's not pregnant and it will be negative. And then you're also gonna send a TSH and the TSH is gonna come back at 15. What's your diagnosis? Hypothyroidism, right? Boom, just like that. Hypothyroidism overall, like I said, second most common endocrine disorder after diabetes, thyroid dysfunction also in general, but from the thyroid dysfunctions, hypothyroidism is by far the most common cause, by far the most common, right? And TSH is the screening test of choice, and I will tell you, not only is it a screening test of choice, it's also diagnostic. You're done. You're done, that's it, end of story. Now, if you send a free T4, which you can, it will come back low. It will come back low, usually. May not, but it will. You could send a, three, a T3 total or free T3. Also come, may come back low or not, but TSH is where the money is, guys. So this is a very important point. The thyroid axis is overall the most stable of the pituitary, hypothalamic pituitary axes, which is why the thyroid axis is the only one that you could screen with a single hormone, TSH. The rest, a single hormone is useless. A single random testosterone, useless. A single random cortisol, useless. A single random LH, useless. A single random ACTH, useless. Combine a cortisol and an ACTH, now you got value. Combine an LH in a test, now you have value. Follow? Because you need, you need to see the axis as a whole. Thyroid is the only exception to this. Because it's such a stable axis, the range of TSH of being normal is so limited compared to the rest. The no, our, our normal range of TSH is basically one to 3.5. That's it. Or 0 0.8, depending on the lab. But point being, the range is very limited. So it's the most stable axis. Therefore, you could screen and diagnose with just a TSH. And if you have a good clinical story, that's it, you're done. Boom, finished. Most common cause overall, by far. I mean, over 85% of cases is called Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And the mediating factor of this are thyroid peroxidase or TPO antibodies. By far, most common cause, the TPO antibodies, the thyroid peroxidase antibodies, they just pound, pound on the thyroid, pound on it like missiles, boom, boom, eventually destroying production. It's the way it is, right? You could also have thyroglobulin antibodies, you could, but the diagnostic for Hashimoto's is TPO thyroid peroxidase. If you see the term microsomal antibodies, same thing as TPO. Same thing as thyroid peroxidase. Don't get scared, same thing, all right? How do we treat this? Simply, actually, you replace what's missing. You treat it with levothyroxine. Levothyroxine, which is basically what, T4. Remember, our thyroid makes 90% T4, 10% T3. T3 is the more active form. But you make T3 by taking a T4 and removing an iodine. 4 minus 1, I don't know, it's been a while since I've been in kindergarten. Math could be a little difficult, but 4 minus 1 is equal to 3, if I remember correctly. Am I right? Yeah. So 4, <laughs> so four iodines minus 1 iodine on a tyrosine residue equals 3 iodines. That's T3. But we, we, we replace almost always with T4, guys. They're not going to ask you about T3 replacement. They're not. 
That's for like endocrine level stuff. But for T, as far as you're concerned, we treat Hashimoto's thyroiditis or hypothyroidism with T4 replacement, levothyroxine. All right? That's hypothyroidism. That's very, it's relatively straightforward. Hyperthyroidism, an overactive thyroid, is a little trickier, also a little more dangerous. So for hyperthyroidism, the opposite of hypo, what are we dealing with here? Well, we have a situation where, for example, we have a 26-year-old woman presenting with tremors, palpitations. She's palpitating. She's 26 and palpitating. And not just because she saw Bradley Cooper at the restaurant recently. You guys know who Bradley Cooper is, right? Right? A friend of mine recently met, saw him at a restaurant once and she like practically collapsed, had syncopal event after seeing Bradley Cooper in a restaurant. Right? Palpitations, right? Tremors, tachycardia, tachycardia, shortness of breath, weight loss, also menstrual irregularities. Guys, Menstrual irregularities can occur with hypo or hyper, or both, both, okay? These are all the signs of hyperthyroidism. So now you have a good story of hyperthyroidism. Again, you're smart, you send a beta, and your beta is negative. Very important. This is even more important than here. It's always important. And I'll tell you why. Because if a woman's pregnant, she can have all of these symptoms, all of them. And if you've been pregnant, you know what I'm talking about. All of them, ask Niket Son Paul, he's been pregnant a couple times. You could ask him when you see him on the street. Ha! <laughs> ask him. <laughs> so, he's, so if you're pregnant and you do a TSH screen, guess what? It will look like you're hyperthyroid. So it's very important that you rule out pregnancy. Very, very important. So pregnancy is ruled out. Then what are you going to do? You're going to send a TSH and it's going to come back suppressed. It's going to come back undetectable. Undetectable, suppressed, less than 0 0.05, undetectable. Right, that's a positive screen for hyperthyroidism. And then you're gonna send a free T4, and it's gonna come back super, super elevated. And now you've confirmed chemical thyroid toxicosis. Boom. By far, the most common cause of hyperthyroidism in the United States and worldwide is Graves' disease, right? And Graves' disease is an autoimmune disorder also. It's a cousin of Hashimoto's, believe it or not but a cousin, but like an opposite, like an evil twin, kind of like spy versus spy. Remember spy versus spy, right? The antibody that mediates Graves' disease is called thyroid stimulating immunoglobulin, or TSIG for short, right? TSI, this is the antibody responsible for Graves' disease. And what this guy does is it permanently turns the TSH receptor on, like a light switch. So there's no feedback inhibition. That's how this guy works. So TSIG is the antibody which, uh, confirm, which is responsible for causing Graves. Now you could confirm Graves in one of two ways. If you have a good clinical story, you have a positive TSIG, you are done. It's Graves. There are also certain physical exam finds that are Graves only. And the other causes of hyperthyroidism do not cause. And these, this is Graves only. Graves only. And these include exophthalmos, if you have Graves' ophthalmopathy, Graves only. It's proteoglycan deposition due to these guys. The antibodies cause macrophages to infiltrate the extraocular muscles and deposit proteoglycans and fat, making the eyes pop out. <laughs> right? That's Graves only. Pretibial myxedema, pretibial myxedema which is the exact same mechanism for ophthalmopathy, but occurs in the shin, is Graves only. Boom, done, Graves only. Not the other causes. What else? Everyone forgets this one. A thyroid brewery. If you put the stethoscope on the thyroid patient, because almost all Graves patients have also thyromegaly, right? They have a large thyroid, Back to me, megalo, right? Acromegaly, megalo, megalo means big in Greek. Thyromegaly, right? She has thyromegaly as well. So if you put a stethoscope on it and she has graves, you can hear a whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. You have a brewery. Why? Because the autoimmunity increases vascularity to the gland and that's, where you, that's the brewery, that's the brewery that you're listening to, 
right? So these three physical exam findings are graves only. If you have hyperthyroidism, thyromegaly with exothalmos, believe it or not, you're done. You've made your diagnosis. You, you have graves. You don't have to do anything else diagnostically. You're done. Now, does every graves patient have exothalmos? No. Pretubum extema? No. Pretubum extema is not very common overall. It's not. The most common is, is exothalmos by far. A brewery too, you may not hear it most of the time. But nonetheless, these are the physical exam specific for graves. If these are not present and you only have chemical and clinical thyroid toxicosis without grave specific signs, then what you do is you do a radioactive iodine scan. And what you do with a radioactive iodine scan The thyroid is the only organ in the body that uses iodine. End of story. So we attach a little bit of radioactivity to it, then you take a special x-ray, and you see how active the thyroid gland is. And you only have three possibilities, guys. You can have increased uptake, high uptake disease, normal uptake, which we're not very concerned about, right? And of course, you can have low uptake. Okay. For high uptake, high uptake diseases, this means what? This means the thyroid gland is overactive. The factory is open for business and business is booming. It's moving, ba-boom, ba-boom. It's going, 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 right? So I need more iodine, I need more fuel, more fuel, more fuel. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. Speedy Gonzalez, right? Graves is a high uptake state. And the other one, which is the second most common cause of hyperthyroidism worldwide in the United States also, is something called toxic nodule or toxic goiter. Same thing, MNG, multinodular goiter. If it's a nodule, it's one. If it's a multinodular goiter, it's more than one. Complicated, right? That's the second most common cause of overactive thyroid. Number one's Graves. Number two, toxic nodule, toxic goiter. Number two, these are both high uptake states. The difference between the two is the pattern on the scan. Graves is what's called homogeneous, meaning the entire gland lights up. Toxic nodule or goiter is called heterogeneous, meaning only the hot nodules will light up. So it's patchy. Where Graves is, the whole. But these are both high uptake states. Normal, we don't care about. What about low uptake? What if you have thyrotoxic symptoms and you have a low uptake on the skin. What does that mean? That is, guys, thyroiditis. Which means what? Thyroids closed for business. Don't call me, don't text me, don't Facebook me and IM me, and don't Instagram me. I saw what you did. We're done. I'm closed for business. That's what thyroiditis, this is what a low uptake state means. Thyroid's not taking up any iodine. You can take your iodine, you can shove it. I don't care about you or your iodine, right? It means the thyroid's pissed off and it's not producing anything. So why is the person thyroid toxic then? Because of destruction, because the thyroid sites are being destroyed and it's, you have a spilling of T4, T3, right? <clears throat> when does thyroiditis occur? Well, it could occur in a number of ways. It could occur at the very beginning of Hashimoto's. It's called Hashi toxicosis. It could occur most commonly what? Post-viral, right? Post-viral, also called subacute. And the truth is, post-viral is a little bit of, an, of a misnomer. It could be any infection. I've seen a post-strep throat. It could be a post-viral, post, any upper airway infection. Post-infectious, it's called subacute. And one word, one word will tell you that you have thyroiditis. One word. And that word is pain. Pain. Subacute thyroiditis, post-infectious thyroiditis hurts like a... It hurts, and if you've ever seen it, thyroid swelled up, it's pissed off, and once you examine the patient, you put your hands on the thyroid, they want to punch you. Boom! It hurts so much. It's true. It's very true, right? So, this is very important because the treatment for this is very different than the treatments for these guys, right? That's how you diagnose your hyperthyroid states. Now, the treatments, well, for the, for, for the high uptake states, You have two options. You have your antithyroid medications and you have radioactive iodine. The question is all about timing. That's the only difference between the two. In general, with Graves' disease, you start with the antithyroid medications. And methimazole is the antithyroid medication of choice. Methimazole. 
right? PTU is number two. Propyl thiouracil is number two. Methimazole, methimazole, all, <laughs> methimazole is drug number one, right? And the rule with Graves is for up to one year because they have a 50% remission rate. So they have to try methimazole first. If methimazole does not work up to one year, then you could, you could treat them with radioactive iodine and burn the thyroid. With toxic nodule toxigoiter, a little different. These guys respond very well to iodine. So there's no need to start methimazole. With these guys, you put them on a beta blocker to control the symptoms. We put them on a beta blocker to control the symptoms, right? Which, by the way, beta blockade controls all hyperthyroid symptoms. The tachycardia, palpitations, and the tremors. Any beta blocker you want. You want propanolol? Knock yourself out. You want metoprolol? God bless. You want atenolol? I'll take it. I know propanolol is the famous one, but the fact is that any beta blocker will do. But beta blockers are for symptoms only. Got it? Symptoms only. Tachycardia, palpitations, tremors. Underlying treatments is either methimazole PTU and or iodine. That's it. So, for Graves, they get methimazole for up to one year, or PTU for up to one year, and if they're not in remission, then you give iodine. For toxic nodule toxigoiter, you control symptomatically if you have to, and then you go straight to iodine, because they do very well. Not that methimazole or PTU is wrong in toxic nodule, but iodine's better. That's simple. That's all. What about pregnancy, real quick? Pregnancy, pregnancy, pregnancy. If a woman's pregnant, what do we use? We use PTU, P for P. Pregnancy for PTU, P for P, right? For at least the first trimester. Afterwards, you could do whatever you want, but at least for the first trimester. And as far as side effects, for methimazole, we're worried about a low white blood cell count. And for PTU, we're worried about what? Liver toxicity, hepatotoxicity, liver toxicity, hepatotoxicity. Methimazole, a granulocytosis, a low white blood cell count. PTU, hepatotoxicity, it's the number four drug on the liver transplant list, causing, requiring liver transplant. All right, guys? Hypo and hyperthyroidism in a nutshell. Boom! Next up, thyroid nodules and thyroid cancer. See you in a minute.